Welcome to the Total Build tutorial. The Total Build program is designed to be easy to use and intuitive, but like anything new, there are some things to learn. We've been helping builders and tradespeople for many years now, so this tutorial does cover the common questions that often crop up when someone's using the program for the first time. This movie covers what the central library is and how to set it up, what the Total Build master file is, how to update your master file with the central library prices, how to set up your Total Build module library, and how to set up your Total Build master file. To carry out the steps in this tutorial, you will need to have the Total Build program and central library that works alongside it installed on your machine. Easy Price Pro does offer an initial setup service for all new customers. The support team will check your settings to ensure the smooth running of the software and activate your program too. Remember to give them a call. OK, let's get started. The Total Build program is what you'll use to prepare your quotations. It will contain all the estimating modules that you've purchased within its module library. When you start a quote, you tell the program which estimating modules you're going to use. They'll be loaded onto the pricing sheet from the module library. Once the work is priced on the pricing sheet, you can generate all the job winning reports. The central library is preloaded with thousands of guide prices for the materials, plant and labour. These guide prices are sourced by Easy Price Pro on a rolling basis. Prior to starting your first proper quote, we do recommend that you check these guide prices and rates to ensure they are in line with the prices that you pay. If adjustments are made to the guide prices in the central library, you must remember to update the total bill program with this information. I'll show you how to do this later in the movie. What is the central library? To begin, we'll look at the central library. To open the central library, click on the Easy Price Pro icon. If you've installed the programs, it should be on your desktop. Click on the Open Central Library option. This opens the central library folder. Now click on the central library file to open it. The central library is broken down into three sections. These sections hold the material prices, plant prices and labour rates. To navigate between the sections, just click on the button for the section you want to go to, like this. I'll go back to the material section. Each section of the central library has a drop down menu. This contains all the subsections for the central library section you're in. To jump to a specific subsection, just click on it. Understanding the layout of the items is easy. View the self-explanatory titles in each of the columns. So in the material section, there's the description of the item, followed by the size, unit and type information. This will vary in the different subsections, but the grey column headers here, that can be found at the top of each subsection, will clarify what the details are. Next is the latest price. All prices in the central library are direct costs. No markups or VAT are added. Remember to follow this format if you adjust prices or add additional items. Here is the date the price was last updated. And in this column is the name of the company that the price has come from. In some cases, a specific supplier won't be listed and the text will confirm this. Some materials, for example aggregates, are usually sourced from a supplier who is near to the location of the job. More often than not, these suppliers don't operate on a national or regional level. So in cases such as this, Easy Price Pro has produced an average price for the item. Setting up your central library. I mentioned that before beginning a quote, it is important to check and if necessary adjust the guide prices that are provided. The best way to do this is to take advantage of the central library's built-in functions. First, download the regional prices for the area of the country that you're in. Click this button. It opens a form that has a map of the UK on it. Click in the area of the map that you're based in. Now select or deselect the sections of the library you want to download the regional prices for. Then click Update Prices. For this function to work, you will need to be connected to the internet. This can take a few minutes to complete. Once the information has been downloaded, you'll get this message. Click OK. When the regional price update has been carried out, the date in the date when last updated column will be automatically adjusted to the date of the download. 
At this point, if you want to keep the updated price information from the regional download, it is worth hitting save. Another built-in function that you may want to take advantage of is the bulk adjustment feature. To access this, we click the Adjust Prices button. This opens a form. You now have the option to change the prices in your material and plant libraries by a percentage, so they're in line with what you pay. The form is currently set on the material library, so you can make percentage adjustments to items from a specific supplier, or change the entire material library by a percentage, or you can just adjust specific sections of the material library by a percentage. If you click this button, you can use adjustment functions in your plant library. The text here provides an explanation on how to use this form. Once the form is set to your preferences, enter the percentage you want to change the selections by. If you want to do a percentage decrease, then just put the minus symbol in front of the number you're entering. Now click the Adjust Prices button. There is the option to restore the prices to the previous setting straight after an adjustment has been made. Just open the form again and click the Restore Prices button. It's important to note if the prices have been adjusted several times using the Adjust Prices button, the Restore Prices button is only able to take you back to the last set of prices. You can overtype any of the details that are in a yellow box. For example, you may want to adjust a description or the latest price in this way. As skips can be so variable, we do recommend going to the Waste Disposal subsection of the Plant Library section, checking, and if necessary adjusting, the prices, if they're not in line with what you pay. Let's go back to the Material section. You'll notice that there are Add New Line and Delete Line buttons. If an item you require isn't listed in the subsection that it belongs to, click the Add New Line button. A new line will be added in the section you are in. Just fill in the details to add it to your library. If there is an item you don't require, you can remove it. Click on the item and click Delete Line. It will be taken out of the central library. Due to the complex nature of how the roof covering materials and waste disposal items are dealt with in the estimating program, you won't be able to add or remove lines in these two sections. If you try to, you will get a message saying it's not possible. In these subsections, you would just adjust any existing descriptions to meet your requirements. It's very important when you add or remove lines to use the buttons provided. Don't delete or insert rows in any other way, because this will create problems. If the built-in Add New Line and Delete Line buttons aren't used, when you update the total build, it won't be able to read and sync with the central library successfully. Let's take a quick look at the Labour section. This section is preloaded with tradespeople, as well as the default timings for the tasks that they'll be carrying out. You can adjust the cost per hour. Remember, if you have employed staff, the cost per hour must reflect the cost to your business and allow for the tax, national insurance contributions, holidays that your business will be making on their behalf. If you use subcontractors who take care of their own tax and national insurance, you enter the hourly cost that they charge you. You can change the description to individual names and add further tradespeople in the blue boxes. Here, you can view and if required, adjust gangs. Use the yellow drop-down boxes to add the tradespeople to the gang. Below this, you can view the time allowed for the different tasks. It's important to note that the central library can be used with both the NHE Plus and Total Build programs. The timings for the tasks that are listed in the central library only sync with the NHE Plus program. If you need to adjust the default timings for tasks in your Total Build program, this can be done in your Total Build module library, which we'll look at later in this movie. OK, let's do a quick recap on setting up the central library. Open the central library. If your machine has internet access, use the Download Regional Prices option. Remember, the preloaded prices and the regional prices should be viewed as guide prices, so check over the information. Do you want to do a bulk adjustment by a certain percentage? If you do, click the Adjust Prices button and use the form. The text explains how you can use this. Do you want to tweak specific items? 
Remember, you can overtype the descriptions and guide prices. If it's a yellow box, you can change it. We recommend that you go into the plant library section and check the skips and that you go into the labour library section and check the trade rates. Remember, total build isn't affected by changes made to the timings of tasks in the central library. So if you only have the total build programme, you won't need to make adjustments to this area of the labour section in the central library. Do you want to add an item? Click in one of the yellow boxes of the subsection you want to add an item to, click add new line, a new line is added. Fill it in. Do you want to remove an item? Click on the item you want to remove and click the delete line button. When you've set your central library to your preferences, hit save. If you've made changes to the information in your central library, it won't be available in the Total Build programme yet. You will need to tell the Total Build programme that you've made changes to the central library by using the update button. We'll learn how to do this a little bit later in this movie. So for now, our central library is saved and we'll close it down by clicking the X in the top right hand corner. Total Build Master File. What is it? We're now going to look at the Total Build program. To open the program, click on the red Easy Price Pro icon to access the program's menu. Then click on the Total Build option. This opens a sub menu. Click Edit Your Master File. This opens the program and we're taken to the Client and Job Details page. And I'm going to explain what the master file is. Every quotation that you produce will be based on the settings in your Total Build master file and Total Build module library. The simplest way to think about the master file is that it's like a jig or template. When Total Build is opened, we should be in our master file and the name of it should be Total Build followed by the version number. You can see the name of the file here at the top. This says Total Build 2.2. So I know this is my master file. When you fill in the client details and hit save and start new quote, the program will begin generating a carbon copy of our master file. You'll select how you're going to choose the estimating modules for the job, then it will close the master file down for you and take you to the pricing sheet of the quotation that's just been created. You'll see that the file name at the top has changed to the name of the client. This is how you know that you're now in a client file and not the master file. The brilliant things about this system are you always have complete control over the settings. And if you set your Total Build master file and Total Build module library up to your standard preferences, you won't have to make adjustments every time you generate a new quote, which will save you time. Another good thing is that you can come back into your Total Build master file or your Total Build module library at any time and make further adjustments. Any changes that are made to the master file will only take effect on future quotations that are produced. Existing quotations that you've already created won't be affected. Any changes that are made to the module library will only take effect when the estimating module is next brought onto the pricing sheet. When a quotation has been created, you can still adjust the settings within it to meet any requirements that are specific to a job but it'd be best practice to take the time to set up your master file and module library to your standard preferences. Then adjust it as and when required on a quote by quote basis. So to recap, when we open the program, we are in our master file. We can tell it's our master file by the file name at the top. The master file is a jig or template. Every quotation that's produced will be a carbon copy of the master file. It'd be best practice to set up the master file to your preferences, as this will save you time. Updating the master file with the central library prices. The first thing you may want to do is to update the master file with the information you've adjusted and added to the central library. As mentioned in the previous movie section, if you do not do this, Total Build won't contain any of the changes that have been made to the central library. We can see we're in our master file by the file name at the top. It says Total Build followed by the version number. To remain in the master file, we don't click Save and Start New Quote. We use the tabs at the top to navigate around the program and access the central library. Click Settings and click Choose Library. Now click Central Library. This will open a window and you should be in the Central Library folder. 
If for any reason you are not taken here, use the left hand bar to navigate to the central library folder. The default file path is Computer, C Drive, Easy Price Pro, Central Library. Click on the Central Library file to open it. When the Central Library is open, you need to get it communicating with your Total Bill programme, so the transfer of information from the Central Library to the Total Bill programme can begin. To do this, click the Update button. This opens a small window. The Central Library can see that the Total Bill programme is open. See, it's listed here. You can tell it's the master file because it's called Total Build, followed by the version number. Now click OK. This process can take a few minutes. Even if you've made minimal changes, every single line in the central library will be compared to the corresponding line in the Total Build program, and any changes will be transferred. When the update has been completed, you will get this message saying it's been successful. Click OK. Close the central library down, you'll now be taken to the total bill pricing sheet. You can see that we're still in the master file as the file name at the top is total build. Every total build estimating module has default material or plant items and tradespeople selected to carry out each tasks. These defaults all have their own unique description. The description is how the program matches them to the associated costs and rates. If you have adjusted the description of an item or tradesperson in the central library that is one of the default selections in your estimating modules, you will need to reselect another item, as your total bill programme will no longer be able to see it and bring the associated costs into the module. This is a really simple process and it will only occur if you have adjusted the description of one of the default material, plant or labour items. Click the Help tab at the top and click Find Reselects. If any are found, just use the form. If you do not have any reselects or if you have reselected the required items, you now need to save your Total Build master file to ensure the information that's been transferred from the central library is saved. Click Reports, click Job Details, now save the programme in this position. You can also do this update process from the central library to individual quotes that have been created. Just follow the process, but have an individual quote open instead. So the information from the central library is now in the master file. Let's do a quick recap on how to get the prices from the central library into the master file. Before you begin this, you do need to have made the required changes to your central library, saved it and closed it. Click the Easy Price Pro program menu, click Total Build, click Edit the Master File. The program opens and you'll be in your Total Build Master File. You can tell by the file name at the top. Now navigate around the Master File using the tabs at the top. Click Settings, click Choose Library, click Open Central Library. Double click on the Central Library file to open it. Click the Update button. Here's the Master File that's going to be updated. Click OK. Wait for the successful message. Close the central library down. Check for reselects. Remember to go back to the client and job details page and hit save in the master file. We'll now look at other ways we can set our program to our preferences. Setting up your total build module library. Okay, all of the estimating modules that came with your total build program are in your module library. It would be best practice to do the update from your central library to your total build master file before you begin setting up your module library to your preferences. We can see that we're in our total build master file by the file name at the top. It says total build followed by the version number. To remain in our master file, we do not click save and start new quote. We use the tabs at the top to navigate around the program. To navigate to your module library, click settings, click Module Library. OK, we're in the Module Library. You may want to adjust the zoom settings so that it fits on a single screen. To do this, click the zoom options in the bottom right hand corner and change to your preferences. The actual zoom setting will depend on your screen size, but it should look like this when it's done. If you click the drop down menu at the top, you will see all of the estimating modules that are in your total build program. To navigate to each one, just click on it and you'll be taken there. You also have the option to use the scroll bar here. You can just scroll through all the modules available to you. You can fine tune the default settings in every single estimating module. 
if you carry this work out here in the module library, then the estimating module will be set to your preferences each time you bring it onto the pricing sheet. You can make further changes to the settings in an estimating module whilst you're on the pricing sheet, and you can come into the module library at any time, either via your master file or the quote you're working in to make changes to the default settings. Any changes to the default settings that are made and saved will take effect the next time you bring the estimating module in. Any quotes that have the estimating module already on the pricing sheet will not be affected. OK, you can drill into and adjust the default settings for every item or task within an estimating module if you want. Click on the question mark. This opens the interactive pictorial form for the item. Any setting that is in a yellow box within this form can be adjusted to your preferences. For example, you may want to change the spacing for the fixings or the sizing details for the door. You may want to click on the architrave and adjust the length allowed for each side of the door. I mentioned that the timings in the labour section of the central library didn't apply to total build. Due to the nature of the type of work that Total Build is designed to price, you adjust the timings for each item or task in the question mark picture associated with it. So in this example, you can increase or decrease the time allowed to fit each linear metre of architrave. Let's look at the boxing module. We'll click the question mark for the framing. In this picture, we can adjust the number of battens per boxing, and we can adjust the hours per linear metre for the fitting of the framing. Every item or task within each module has the question mark option, allowing you to check and if necessary adjust the time allowed for the task and where applicable the settings for how it will be calculated. You can also change the default material and plant items that have been selected for each item or task within every single estimating module in the module library. To do this, click on the yellow box. You can use the magnifying glass if required. Now, if you always tend to use a different material or plant item, select it from the drop-down menu. It's really that simple. If there are items within an estimating module that you do not use, you can switch them off. They can always be turned back on at a later date here in the module library, or as and when you bring the module onto the pricing sheet. Just click the tick to turn it off, or click the cross to turn it on. You can also change the tradesperson allocated to carry out each task. Again, just use the drop-down menu. The work section that the item or tasks will be allocated to in the payment and work schedule can be changed as well. Just use the drop-down menu. You can use this level of fine-tuning on every single estimating module within your total build module library. You can adjust the default wastage allowance here at the top of each estimating module as well. All of the common and not so common items and tasks that may be needed to carry out the work are listed in every estimating module. But if required, you can add additional lines to the estimating modules and customise them to your preferences. Just click the Insert Line button. Fill in the line using the drop-down menus so it meets with your requirements. Remember, if you do this and save it, that additional line can't be removed from the estimating module. We do advise not to enter any details into the red boxes at the top of an estimating module, as this is information that's likely to be different on each job that you do. Also, don't try and type information into the quantity column. These grey and sometimes blue boxes hold formulas, and if these are removed, when you bring the estimating module onto the pricing sheet and complete the red boxes, it won't be able to calculate correctly. The same applies to the white boxes in the plant, material, labour and totals columns. When you access the total build module library via the total build master file, you are able to add your own custom module. You can view the movie that shows how custom modules can be created. When you've watched this, click the new module button and begin. When you're setting up your module library, remember to save at regular intervals. Click options and click save. If you cannot see Save on the Options toolbar, click File, then click Save. Before you close your programme, remember to hit Save again. OK, let's do a quick recap on how to set up your module library. Open your master file, click Settings, click Module Library. Check that you can see the entire library on a single screen. 
if you can't see all the columns, adjust the zoom settings. Now by scrolling down or by using the drop down menu, check the default settings for the items or tasks in the estimating modules. Click the question mark to access the pictures that enable you to adjust the timings for tasks and other details about the way it will calculate. The material or plant items can also be adjusted here in these drop down menus and you can select a different default item if required. Remember, if it's a long description, you can use the magnifying glass. Check the tradesperson allocated to the item or task. Do you want to adjust it? Use the drop down menu if you do. Are you happy with the default work section? This is the section that the financial value for the task will be allocated to in the payment schedule and the section that the time taken to carry out the task will be allocated to on the work schedule. You can adjust the wastage percentage if required. If you want to switch items on or off, click on the tick or the cross. Do you want to add your own custom module? We recommend viewing the movie that shows you how to do this, or if you've seen it, click this button to begin building your own custom module. Remember, unlike other adjustments that you can make to the module library, the creation of a custom module can only be carried out when you've accessed the module library via the total build master file. Remember to hit save at regular intervals when you're making changes to your module library. And remember to save it before you close the program down. Setting up the total build master file. Setting up is straightforward. First, check you're in the master file. You can tell by the file name at the top. It will be called Total Build, followed by the version number. We will begin by checking the settings on the Client Details page. If you are not on the Client and Job Details page, to navigate to it, click Reports and click Job Details. When doing any changes to the master file, keep in mind that whatever you save in your master file will appear in future quotations that are generated from it. So there will be certain things, for example the client's name and address, or estimating modules on the pricing sheet that you don't want to put in here, as in most cases, these things will vary on each job. You can set up a job reference system on the Client and Job Details page. Click the red question mark and follow the instructions. Remember, if you're using the job reference system, only put letters in the top box and numbers in the bottom box. If this isn't done correctly, you will experience problems generating a new quote. You may also want to add estimators' names. Again, click the red question mark and follow the instructions on the form. To adjust the other settings in your master file, you need to remain in the master file. So when doing this, don't click save and start new quote. Use the tabs at the top to navigate around. It's worth taking the time to set certain defaults for the reports that Total Build generates, as this will save you time when you begin pricing. Let's see how. Use the tabs along the top again. Click Settings and click Edit Quote. Here you can see the default text for the opening paragraph. If you change this to your preferences in your master file, you won't need to do this each time you generate a written quote. I'll go back to the quote. You can opt to rewrite the quote. You can add your own logo into the written quote report. If you do this in your master file, it will be there every time you price a job. Click the Insert Logo button. This will open a window. Simply navigate to the location on your machine where the logo is stored. It will need to be in a picture format, such as a JPEG. When you've located it, click on it, then move it into the position you would like. It's important to note that if you are going to export your written quote to Microsoft Word when pricing, the logo isn't able to export with it. You can opt to switch on or off the various features that are listed here at the top of the written quote too. I'll now go to the holiday sheet. It's worth adding any dates that your business will be closed and not carrying out any work into the holiday sheet of your master file. That way, they won't be allowed for in any work schedules. The final report you may wish to set up is the summary. Click Reports, click Summary. It may be that the markups and overheads are something that you will want to adjust on a job-by-job -job basis. But if you tend to use the same markups, you can set them to your preferences by using the slider bars. OK, when you set up your master file to your preferences, you do need to save it. It's best practice to click Reports, click Job Details, then click Save. This ensures that when you next open your master file to start a new quote, you will be on your Client and Job Details page. That does bring us to the end of this movie. 
If you haven't already, to ensure that you get the most out of the programme, it is worth viewing the other Total Build tutorial that will show you how to start your first Total Build quote. If you do need any further help and you have a support pack with hours in place, you can call the support team on 0845 612 4747. Support hours can be used for questions, help and advice, additional tutorials. If you want, you can even use your support hours to get your central library set up. If you don't have any support hours and would like assistance over the phone or via remote connection, then please call 0845 612 4747 and select the sales option. Alternatively, you can always email support at easypricepro.com and we will advise you of the support options that are available to you.